sobre. He'll speech will be in English tonight. This will be a 10 to 12 minute speech. Harry has been a member of Lavos for 11 years. Harry was well established before I got here. And a member of Toastmasters for now 27 years. He has served as president, as vice president of education, vice president of membership in this club, and in fact continues to play a critical role every for every meeting. This speech is from the Advanced Communication Manual on a demonstration project. And so the title of the speech is An Introduction to Spanish Language Pronunciation. And it is aimed at helping non-Spanish and beginning Spanish speakers. This will be an interactive speech, one in which the audience member, members, after receiving an explanation of the rules of pronunciation, will have an opportunity to practice speaking and pronouncing Spanish words. It will also be a collaborative project as Latino club members will be requested to read sentences to demonstrate proper pronunciation techniques. So stay on your toes, folks. Let's please welcome Harry Wolf. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. There are three categories that I'm going to discuss today. My speech, the pronunciation of vowels, consonants, and where words do not have an accent mark, where should the stress fall in that particular word? All right. In Spanish, each vowel has only one sound, and it's a short sound. So if you will repeat after me, a, 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 F, A, E, E, O, O, U, U, short, not long. Okay, so now, for example, to apply what the sound for A, ah, as each word comes in, please recite it with me. A la, canta, banda, lana, mama. Lata, papa, basta. For the vowel a, ese, entender, enseñe, enmende, elefante, encante, esperanza. For I, limite, limite. Lisa, chica, bonita, salir, cómico, capital, solo, ocho, como, loco, taco, foto, and the last one, gusano, luna, uva, útil, Menu, uso, uno. For these examples, there are words with multiple vowels. Local, local. ocupo, ocupo. popular, solicitas, participante, consonante, Canada, menu. An interesting rule is that when one word ends in a vowel and the next begins with a vowel, the two words are combined as if they were one. It's not the best example, but the H is silent there. La hora, como estas, instead of como estas, it's one word. And when vowels occur consecutively, you have diphthongs and triphthongs. These are a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but we have Viejo, aire, oigo, ruido, autor, deuda, and cambiais, y averiguais. All right, now here comes the challenge, the consonants. 
Some Spanish consonants are not pronounced the same way in English. There is no R or Z, as you'll see later. Some Spanish consonants don't exist in English, like the EY or the R. And the sound of some consonants are different depending on where they're positioned in the word. For example, between two vowels. All right. I found this fella to do some demonstration for us. The V and the V have the same sound in Spanish. There's no dif differentiation between the two. So the heartbeat, like in boy, this is the way it should sound. Oops. Vino, vino. Okay. For the soft, it is the lips just gently touch one another. It's not as explosive. So for instance, Avelino, soplava, daba, avion. So it isn't Avelino, it's Avelino. Okay. Now, let's try some together as far as this is the heartbeat like boy. So we have bien, vosotros, bailar, vino, albañil, amba. The soft V again, the lips just touch one another, but not as forcefully as in English. So it's trabajar, avión, oveja, abismo, For the next sentence, I will select a Latino person in the group to read them because we're going to get into some trava language a little bit later. So those are tongue twisters. Okay, the D consonant, the hard D, is just like we say in the word day, and here is decir, deber, dañar, daba. The soft D is pronounced as if it's th. Cansado, todos, modos, ocupado. Okay, so let's practice this together. This is the hard D. Daba, doble, banda, anda, huésped, salud. The soft D, like the TH. Nada, todo, cada, nada. And Lorena, the sentence. Cada ada no hace nada. Cada ada no hace nada. Okay? Each fairy doesn't do anything. What? All right. The G, before the E and I, it sounds like an H. So we have genio, gitano, gimnasio. After, before A, O, and U, it's similar to English. Gana. Gota, Usano, and with the constant H, it's silent in Spanish. So you have hombre, hambre, honor, ahora, alcohol, alcohol, correcto. And next we'll have uh, Celia, if you would please read this sentence for me. Tengo hambre, hombre, y tengo el honor de beber alcohol. Okay. <laughs> All right. The J has a more guttural sound than it does in English. We just instead of habon, you'll hear for a moment as Avelino pronounces this. Habon, habon, roja, ganaje. Okay. So we have some examples here. So Juan, 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 Don Quixote, Caja, Ajo, Ojo, and Carlos, please. Juan va a Guanajuato para ver. It should be una. Una caja de ajo y un grupo de jirafas. Okay. So that's, that's the J. The consonant double L is pronounced like the Y in yellow, except in Argentina, it's like the G in garage. Oh. Sounds pretty strange. But we're going to use the Y pronunciation here. Allí, Riyar, Yamar, Yo, Mayo, Ya. Okay, now we have Mark. Is it Marco? Would you please pronounce your Spanish is wonderful. Go ahead. 
Mamá me llama para llegar a tiempo. Thank Mamá you. Mamá me llama para llegar a tiempo. Thank you. One of the most difficult ones is the double R because it requires tongue rolling, but I don't think it's as difficult as you might think. Watch Avelina. Arriba, arroba, burro, sierra. Okay, so let's try some together. Perro. The problem is if you say perro, it's a different word, it means but. Correr. Ferrocarril. Sorro. Barrer. Okay, so here comes, who do I, who's the, Rosie. El perro corre al ferrocarril del barrio. El perro corre al ferrocarril del barrio. All right. The consonant R, when it's between two vowels, the sound is produced by tupping, touching the roof of the mouth with the tip of the tongue. So it is, as Avelina will show here. Para. Cara, pero, flora. There is no R sound in Spanish like our R sound. So within a word, again, let's pronounce this. Para, 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 cara, para flora. flora. And at the beginning of the word, it's also trilled as if it's a double R. Or the end of the word. Radio, rascar, rascar, rascar robar, 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 Okay, um, Lorena. El ladrón toma ron mientras roba la ropa de Roberto. Thank you. Okay. T, T is a less pronounced, less explosive than in English. In English, we say things like Tom, terrible, and Tom. I did not even realize this difference until I started looking it up. In Spanish, it's a more subtle. It's Tamales instead of tamales. Tu and meter. Okay. So the sentence we have would be Marco, you wanna? No toque todos mis tacos. No toque todos mis tacos. Okay. Finally, the Z, it's pronounced like S, except in Spain it's like TH. So this would be azul. Zapatos, Zacatecas, Arizona, Zorro, Zurdo. And now we need someone to pronounce this. Carlos? In Arizona, los zurdos necesitan llevar zapatos azules. Yes, and if it were in Spain, it would be in España, los, los zurdos necesitan llevar zapatos azules. That's the way they would say it there. When, it's very important to know where the emphasis falls in a word where there is no accent mark. So the rule is, if the word ends in S, N, or a vowel, the emphasis falls on the second to the last syllable. So for instance, hablaron, cada, lunes, crisis, martes. For other words, the emphasis falls on the last syllable. So we have hablar, doctor, and comer. Oops. Well, Oops. there should have been a slide here that said, what's next? What's next is, number one, I suggest you might want to practice the pronunciation by going to the Lavos website where there are descriptions of the functionaries and you can practice it so the next time you pronounce something, you have it. Secondly, you may want to consider more formal, taking a Spanish class or going to a group where they practice Spanish. And finally, if you have any questions, check with me. Mr. Tosin.